Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Third of Angels Ministries. In the name of our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, may you all have received a seal of the living Yahweh. For those who are present, we'd like to invite you to have a word of prayer with us. Let us kneel as we pray. Our kind Heavenly Father, as we open your word in anticipation and expectation, we ask for your grace and your mercy. And may the word go forward and not return unto the evil word. We ask for a transformation of our characters. As we enter into the, thy Sabbath, we accept your blessings that you may sanctify us and make us holy. Regenerate our spirit with thy Holy Spirit. Bless us is our hope in you, Almighty Prince. And while I am preaching and teaching, my mind is directed by thee, that thy holy small still voice may guide my words, and that I may be under thy guidance. Bless those who are viewing, and bless those who have entered the Sabbath, that you may sanctify them and transform them into your love of character is our hope in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. In the name of Yeshua we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we also like to share with you to open your Bibles. We will be using the text of Recept this, this evening, and for those of you that have other versions you would like to use, it is fine. But let us remember this, that we want straight, correct messages that were given to us by the prophets. And they were guided by our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. As we view our study, ladies and gentlemen, we also like to share with you is that it's very important to understand very key points. For example, in behalf of the Third Full Angels Ministries, we have a new email, which is 7danielrevelation at gmail.com. Please, we'd like to emphasize to subscribe to the channel that you may receive the studies freely, no charge to you. But there is a responsibility. The responsibility is that the end of time is coming, Christ is preparing his people, and he is calling them to come out of confusion and out of Babylonian livelihoods. Come out of the Christian nominal churches and the Adventist nominal churches around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, this is very personal. However, it is a warning. As we begin, ladies and gentlemen, in behalf of the Third Holy Angels Ministries, the topic of our study this evening is the image. Our reference this evening is found in Revelation chapter 13, verse 12. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. This is this first phase. First phase. And he exercises all the power of the first beast. The question is, who is the beast and what is the beast before him? And causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast. Whose daily wound was healed. Let us go back a history. Number one, the dragon is found in Revelation chapter 12 that made war in heaven, which is Lucifer, which was his first name. He is a fallen being. His name is now Satan, Hasatan. Your reference is found in Revelation chapter 12. Number two, beast is found in Daniel 7.25. Revelation 13, verses 1 through 10, that ruled for 1260 years, ruled a continent and surrounding territories. Did not rule the whole world at the time. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, he would attempt to change Moedims and laws. In Revelation 13, verses 1 through 10, he ruled for a short period of time which was 1,260 years. Number three, the false prophet is found in Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 through, through 18. In July 4th, 1776, was the independence from Great Britain that the United States of America 
had won. However, the United States of America has transitioned into apostasy. The United States of America pays money to Great Britain, which is still under its rules and laws at this time. The United States is not a country as you have seen it, ladies and gentlemen. The laws are still intact. In Revelation chapter 13, verse 12, and he exercises all the power of the first beast, this is the first stage, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein, referring to everyone in the world, and the key word here, ladies and gentlemen, is worship. Worship. Who are you going to worship, and on what day are you going to worship and set aside a beautiful day where there's no business, there's no buying, there's no selling, etc. What day are you going to put aside? Well, everybody in the world grew up to keep the first day of the week, which is Sunday. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. The evening and the morning was the first day and following the creation. However, ladies and gentlemen, what occurred here is that many of us have not studied the Bible to understand its clarity, its definitions, and its meaning. We have to go back into history to comprehend why we grew into a world of confusion, distress, wars and rumors of wars, famine and pestilence. And yet others have not grown that way. <clears throat> others have grown up in prosperity because of their fathers and their mothers' wealth that was accumulated in other ways. However, and causes the earth and them which dwell there to worship, which is the key word here, the first beast. So apparently, the Apostle John is sharing with us that the key word here is worship. So there has been many pastors, <coughs> excuse me, and many laymen have proclaiming that Sunday laws are not in the Bible, that Sunday is not in the Bible in regards to worship, etc. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to prove what the Bible has to say this evening. Can I hear an amen? Mm -hmm. And let us use the Bible mm -hmm. and the Bible only. In reading, whose deadly wound was healed. This is number three. This is future tense. In other words, this deadly wound has not been healed. So, if I may ask, who is it referring to here, ladies and gentlemen? Because we want to be able to elaborate your questions as you send them in to us as I speak. If you have questions, send them in. Because we're going to use the Bible and the Bible only. Can I hear an amen? So many of us have references from other writers. Maybe other people have been inspired. But this evening we will use the Bible. Okay? So let us view the screen. <coughs> and uh, focus what it's saying. Once again, and he, who is he? that is, exercises all the power of the first beast before him. The word he here would have to be the United States. And causes, so the word causes here is referring to political, religious issues that have been introduced by law. Okay? The earth and them which dwell therein to worship. There's the key right here. So when you're worshiping, what day are you worshiping? Are you worshiping Sunday or are you worshiping Sabbath? This is the question that I'm asking. The first beast. The first beast was who? Who was the first beast? Hmm? Whose daily wound was healed. So we find that in history, Daniel chapter 7 verse 25 gives us a clear text in regards to what they did. But before I do go on, let us review a few key points. Number one, beast is the Catholic universal church. In Bible prophecy, beast represents a Catholic universal church. It represents a woman. However, in the Bible, you read about two women. Two women. One is fair and one is evil. Let me continue. Number two, the beast is the Catholic universal church. Number eight, ruled for 260 years, Daniel 7 verse 25. B, it ruled from A.D. 538 to 1798, 260 years. 
Can I hear an amen? So we're going back to history to find out what this beast did. They received this power from the dragon. C. Your biblical scripture is found in Daniel 7 verse 25. And it ends in 1798 with the prophecy of John. Because it begins in the book of Daniel first. And it ends in the book of John in Revelation 13 verse 3. It received a deadly wound. That deadly wound, ladies and gentlemen, if I may emphasize, was as follows. The deadly wound was when France was atheistic, rejected God, rejected the Bibles and the scriptures. And it grew, and it grew. However, what took place here, ladies and gentlemen, is that persecution was taking place. When Napoleon came in with his army, he conquered those areas. And he got the Pope. He sent General Berthe to Rome to take the Pope off the throne. While the Pope was removed from his seat in the Vatican, the Committee of Napoleon wrote a law in regards to religious liberty. It was introduced to the country. When religious liberty was introduced, it ceased and deceased persecution. Can I hear an amen? If you study your history correctly, this is exactly what happened. So in Revelation chapter 13, verse 3, the beast received a deadly wound. That wound has not been healed. However, it is in the process, but it is not healed entirely. And that wound that it received was a law that was passed by them to cease and decease persecution. The same thing that happened back then with France, this atheistic country, is the same copycat that's going to happen to us in the United States. Where our Second Amendment, the Fourteenth Amendment, and all the amendments are going to be repugated to the core forever. Religious liberty would be annihilated, while persecution would be introduced once again to follow the dictates of Pontifus Maximus. As I begin to introduce to you in this short study this evening, I'd like us to take note of what happened and read your books correctly. Number one, the beast equals the Catholic Universal Church. A, ruled for 1260 years. B, began in 538 ended in 1798. See, your biblical scripture is found in Daniel 7.25 and it ends in Revelation chapter 13 verse 3. Here's your proof. D, what they did in the 1260 day year prophecy is that they changed the Moadines and they killed nationalities and they invaded various countries. Continuing. And they changed the Torah, 613 laws, to suit the conclave of cardinals' decisions from Pope after Pope after Pope sessions. This is what took place. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, you had a scenario of history that has been repeated time and time again, preparing a people. So the question is, what is worship that brings in a state of confusion, a state of false religion, a state of laws that have been dictated by dictators and countries? Great Britain plays a very big part in prophecy in last day events. The United States will speak like a dragon, and it is already doing it. And it is increasing more and more. Now let me ask a question. What do you know about a president? How much power does a president have? Why is it that President Donald Trump cannot cease and decease what the Democrats are doing and Joe Biden? Why? I'm waiting. Do you know? 
Who owns the United States, brothers and sisters? What does the United States owe Great Britain? And besides Great Britain, does the Vatican run the country? That's a question. Therefore, in Revelation 13, verse 12, and he exercises all the power of the first beast. That first beast is referring to Rome before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship. The word worship here, ladies and gentlemen, is referring to Sunday. This is the copycat that the first beast is doing. Then and doing now in the second phase. However, the deadly wound is not healed, brothers and sisters. This is future tense. So the beast is the Catholic Universal Church. It's ruled over in 60 years. Years, yes, but not going to rule in another phase where this is being applied. That will never happen again. Therefore, you have the date when it started. You have the biblical scripture. You have the date when it ended. And you have biblical scripture. And D, what they did that you hardly hear very much is that they changed the Moedims and they changed the Torah. So when you read Daniel chapter 7 verse 25, did he would attempt to change times and laws? People want to tell you and everyone else that the times means the calendar. But if you look the words up, ladies and gentlemen, that's not what it's saying. It's referring to seasons. Moedims, which is written in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 1 through 44. That's what it's referring to. That's the Torah. In Revelation 13, verse 14, And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image. What is the image, brothers and sisters, that they want to make? Because the image comes out of worship. Stay with me. The image comes out of worship. And when you're worshiping, it has to be a specific day that you're worshiping. These are principles. These are religious principles that has been introduced for many, many years. Continuing should make an image to the beast. Who is the beast, brothers and sisters? The Catholic Universal Church, which had the wound by a sword and did live. So the sword removed the Pope and the system did live. It continued until it received power once again. Therefore, Pontifus Maximus, brothers and sisters, is always the name of a Pope. Pontifus Maximus is the individual that has passed these laws to time, time again. Every session, every generation, every year, laws have been passed. When the laws are passed, they're introduced to the president of every country for them to pass in their country. And I'll give you an example. Beginning with President Ronald Reagan, President Ford, President Carter, President Reagan, President John F. Kennedy, President Johnson, and we go all the way back to 1792, President Harrison passing the Sunday law closing laws. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to share with you here is that there is a mandatory observance of Sunday coming mandatorily by force. The Tatu Si was passed by Pontifus Maximus. Number one, Sunday observance is inscribed in the encyclical letter of La Dato Si. Number two, it emphasizes the Eucharist worship. Number three, it introduces Trinity worship. These three key components have been existing and have infiltrated and been introduced to the churches. Everything is now set, brothers and sisters, for this system to rise. But it's never going to rise. In other words, these ten toes are not going to rise because our Savior is going to break it. 
Number four, September 24, 2015, the Antichrist presented Laudato Si to Congress. The Democrats and the Republicans who were present, also all the legislative aides and sergeant at arms, all the way down to the layman. Now, what happened here, ladies and gentlemen, has now grown into various encyclical letters of enforcing climate action change now, H.R. 9. It has also emphasized reverence on Sunday. So when you read the bottom line of this encyclical letters, besides Laudato Si, you will come to a conclusion realizing that there is going to be an enforcement of Sunday observance throughout the whole country and throughout the whole world. And that these countries will surrender their sovereignty to Pontifus Maximus, which is in the transition. Five, Pope Francis I is the one that introduced the Dato C. He is responsible because he has been guided by the devil to do this work. And the whole world is riding on the back of this whore. So here, ladies and gentlemen, we come to a very key point. And the very key point here that I want to share is this. Many of us have misunderstood scripture to say something else that it doesn't say. And there has been many theologians and many professors that have written Bibles to suit their comprehension of what it is meaning. We are not to do that. We are not to change what a word or a jot or a tittle is saying. For all shall be fulfilled. Ladies and gentlemen, while I stand here this Holy Sabbath, I am bringing to your attention that the Bible is very correct in regards to there will be an enforcement of Sunday observance. You are all employed all over the country, all over the world. And some of you, the majority, will not be employed because you have to receive the mark of the beast, and receive the image. Why? It is because it's going to be a law and it's going to be made mandatory. You will not be able to be employed if you don't have the mark of the beast. You will not be able to buy your groceries as you used to do if you do not have the image of the beast. These are the issues, ladies and gentlemen, and the consequences are serious. However, our Savior has told us that these things will take place, and He's been preaching it through His prophets, through His apostles, through His laymen, through the pastors, through the evangelists, there are those that are out there who want to call themselves bishops. That's fine. But ladies and gentlemen, if the messages are not correct, all these people who have been preaching are not going to be in the kingdom. They're going to fall just like a domino effect. And only the righteous are going to stand. Why? It's because they've been studying correctly and they have a vertical, horizontal relationship with our Savior, Jesus Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach, who is your personal Savior. There are millions and millions of atheists, millions and millions of people that do not believe in heaven, Jesus Christ, God, the Father, Yahweh. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time now to make a decision. The laws are already in place. It doesn't matter who the president is going to be. There might not even be a president. And we're going to be surprised with the overwhelming change that is coming. The media is corrupt to the core. Fox News, CNN, all of them. Your radio stations, you have a few that are out there telling you the truth. And the only advice that I have for us this evening, ladies and gentlemen, if I may, is your Bible. Your Bible has the answers. And your Bible gives us counsel. These scriptures were dictated by the Holy Spirit as they choose men and women who were filled with the Holy Spirit to write and to dictate the principles that were given to us, that are given to us, so that we as a people may find Christ, the hope of glory, who gives us salvation, who is offering and open his arms to receive him and repent and be baptized. 
that we may have an opportunity to open our life to Him, that the kingdom will be open. In closing, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to share some very key points. I will be reading from the 1884 Great Controversy, and I will be reading from page 277. In the book that I hold in my hand it is the Great Controversy between Christ and His Angels and Satan and His Angels, comparing the 1911 Great Controversy and the 1884 Great Controversy. In reading your hearing, and this is correct, and they removed it from all the other great controversies. You won't read them in there, but you'll read it in the 1884, as it was dictated. In reading your hearing, but the stem tracings of the prophetic pencil reveal a change in this peaceful scene. The beast with lamb-like horns speaks with the voice of a dragon. The lamb-like horns, republicanism, and Protestantism is the United States. And this is what's held the country in power, but they're losing it. And exercises all the power of the first beast before him. The spirit of persecution manifested by paganism and <coughs> papacy, and the papacy, excuse me, is again to be revealed. Prophecy declares that this power will say to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. The image is made by the is made to the first or leper like beast, excuse me, which is the one brought to view in the third angel's message. By this first beast is represented the Roman Church, an ecclesiastical body clothed with civil power, having authority to punish all dissenters. The image to the beast represents, number two, another religious body, clothed with similar power. The formation of this image is the work of that beast, whose, faith, whose peaceful rise and mild professions render it so striking a symbol of the United States. Here is to be found an image of the papacy, when the churches of our land unite upon such points of faith as are held by them in common, shall influence the state to enforce the decrees and sustain their institutions, then will Protestant America have formed an image of the Roman hierarchy. Then the true church will be assailed by persecution. As were God's ancient people, almost every century furnishes examples of what bigotry and malice can do under a plea of serving God by protecting the rights of church and state. Protestant churches that have followed in the steps of Rome by forming an alliance with worldly powers have manifested a similar desire to restrict liberty of conscience. In the 17th century, thousands of nonconformists Ministers suffered under the rule of the Church of England. Persecution always follows religious favoritism on the part of secular governments. 1884 Great Controversy, 277. Ladies and gentlemen, when there is persecution, there is a harvest of righteousness going to come out of it. This is something that has to be mentally, spiritually prepared for. When there is a persecution, and there will be one, a very overwhelming persecution, there is going to be a harvest of righteous people that are going to be martyred, that are going to come out. And there are others, ladies and gentlemen, that will not see death and will come out. And a better word to use here is evil practices. Sin is evil. This is not a very humble study, and this is not very humble words to use. But many of us have been looking to the reports of the television, the news, the newspapers, to help us to see the end time events. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's not there. Where you will find it is in the Holy Scriptures, because the Scriptures 
introduce someone who's going to give us eternal life if we are willing to repent. And this is the condition. There is not going to be a soul that's going to get out of anything without repentance. This week a young lady came up to me at work and I was picking up some things that had fallen. She comes up and she says, how can I receive salvation? It dawned on me and I stopped. And I responded by saying, be rebaptized. Confess your sins. Repent. Be born again. This was what the Lord had put before me. And I responded to her. I didn't even know her. But she walked up to me. Ladies and gentlemen, every day there are people that want salvation. And there are people that need help. There are people that are not going to be in the kingdom because we did not give them attention. Let us pray and hope that everybody that passes us by or we pass them by, that we may open our words to them and share with them that salvation is open. Christ is waiting to use each one of us to win souls for his kingdom. And he's asking and pleading with us this evening that we may spend some time to find those who are lonely, to find those who are in need, and to pray and ask you, send me. Am I ready? This evening, ladies and gentlemen, this study I wanted to bring out is because there is an image that's already being formed. It is prepared. But it is the Father that's holding it from being released. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but we do know this tonight. That salvation has come to us in love, in peace, in joy, in patience. For in your patience possesses you your souls. Let us close in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, holy, holy Yeshua, we praise you for the love and the grace you've given to us. I ask a double portion of praying the lady who approached me this week and asked for salvation. Anoint her with thy spirit, her children, her family, that they may see you the hope of glory. We ask for your blessings for everyone in the world and a double portion of your spirit upon them who seek thee with all their heart, soul, and mind is our prayer and our hope. And we praise you, your majesty, for your holy Sabbath and your holy commandments that you've given to us to protect us and guide us from transgression. In the name of Yeshua we pray. Amen.